I'm just trying to find my sermon notes here, which I've got somewhere. Very interesting. Bear with me a minute, I'm just still trying to find what I've done with my sermon notes. Okay then. I'm going to try and remember what it was all about anyway, if I can't find them here. Today is World Communion Sunday, did you know that? First Sunday in October is World Communion Sunday. It's, it's something that they commemorate and celebrate in the American Presbyterian Church, but it's never really caught on with us. But I think it's good for us to think about Holy Communion, something that almost all Christians do. There are two Christian groups that don't actually have any sacraments, one is the Quakers, the Society of Friends. The other is the Salvation Army. Every other group of Christian has Holy Communion or the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, in some form or other. But it's astonishing the different way in which it's celebrated across the world in different traditions. Some churches... Uh, have the common cup uh, and where the, the members share one cup. Within our tradition we have individual cups and recently since the pandemic we've now got these sealed individual cups that we're using at the time for the time being. In some traditions only the priests drink the wine and the laity just have the bread without the wine. In some traditions, in the Greek Orthodox tradition, uh, the bread and the wine are taken together. They dip the bread in the wine and then serve it with a spoon to the congregation. Amazing the different ways in which this is done, isn't it? Some churches insist on having real, proper wine from fermented grape juice and unleavened bread or unleavened wafers. Other churches use non-alcoholic wine, as we do, or grape juice, and various different forms of bread, and we normally tend to just use an ordinary loaf of bread for our bread. It's different at the moment because we're under pandemic conditions. We're using wafers. But there are so many different ways in which different groups celebrate this act. And yet they're all doing the same thing. They're doing what Jesus commanded his disciples to do. They're all worshipping the same saviour. They all believe that he is Lord and King, that he died and that he rose again. They may have different ideas, different theology about what they're actually doing in the communion. In some churches where they believe in transubstantiation, they believe that the actual bread and wine is miraculously transformed into the body and blood of Christ. In other churches, more especially the Protestant churches that we belong to, we say that the bread and wine is symbolic of the blood, the body and the blood of Christ. It doesn't actually turn into the body and blood of Christ, but it's there as a kind of visual aid, a symbol to remind us of how Jesus died on the cross and rose again. Now, in every uh, communion service, there are three dimensions. There's the past, the present, and the future element. Even when Jesus was with his disciples at the Last Supper, 
Well, it was a Passover celebration and they were looking back to how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. That's what the Passover was commemorating. So they were looking back, but at the same time they were there with Jesus, having fellowship with him and eating at his table. And at the same time he was talking about the future and telling them that he was going to die his body was going to be broken, his blood was going to be shed, and he was going to go back to his Father in heaven. So there was the past, the present, and the future element in that first Last Supper. And in every communion service today, there's the past, the present, and the future. The past element is that we are looking back and remembering Jesus. We are doing this in remembrance of him. We're taking the bread, the wine. We're thinking of Jesus at the Last Supper with his disciples, taking bread and wine. But we're also thinking about his body hanging on the cross, punished for our sins, his blood shed, poured out, so that we could be forgiven. We're looking back and we are putting our trust in him, the living Lord, who gave his life for us on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection as well. It doesn't stop there. He died once for all on the cross and now he is alive. And so we, when we take bread and wine, it's the body and blood of our living Lord that we are celebrating, not one who's still dead. So there's the looking back, thankfully, gratefully, to what Christ has done for us. Then there's the present element of it. We are here together as the body of Christ, the church. We should be in fellowship with one another when we come to the Lord's table. If we're holding grudges against one another, we've got to stop doing that. We've got to forgive them. We should not take of the Lord's Supper if we're in an attitude of unforgiving spirit towards others. Which is why sometimes, or certainly before we had the pandemic, we would greet one another and give one another the peace and go and shake hands or embrace one another. We are one body, one fellowship with Christ and with Christ's people all over the world and with all Christ's people who are already in heaven, we are one fellowship, eternal. That's the present element and the future element is our hope for the future. I've been talking about hope in, in recent weeks. Hope is faith, what God is going to do in the future. And he has promised us eternal life. And he has told us that we shall be with him in his heavenly mansions. And he has told us that we shall feast forever in his heavenly kingdom. So we look forward to that final day when we shall be. And all who love Christ shall be with him forever. We look back, we celebrate now, and we look forward to that day. Let us now, as we prepare to come to the Lord's table, sing together hymn number 939. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved and free. The life of Jesus to recall in love laid down for me.
And so we come to the Lord's table. The Lord's table is open to all who love the Lord Jesus, who love him in all sincerity. It's open to all who are in fellowship with God's people. We do not recognize any denominational barriers here. Therefore, let us join together in this holy fellowship. And we remember the words of Jesus on one occasion when he said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We also remember the words of the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, where he talks about the Lord's Supper and how this was first instituted. Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And Paul adds, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us therefore follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ in word and in action, and may the peace of the Lord be with us. Please remain where you're seated, but turn and uh, gr greet the people around you with the peace. Peace be with you. You can wave at people. Peace be with you. We come together in a spirit of fellowship and peace. Peace be with you. Let us pray. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Am I rarglwyth am I? Am I esprit and brasenol? Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty Father, we praise you for creating all things, for making us human beings in your own image. While we were yet sinners, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to live as one of us, to suffer death on the cross, and to rise again for our salvation. Therefore, with all your creation in heaven and on earth, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Sancti, 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 thou gluid, thou pob gatli agrim. Never dire sin slown of the gonient. Hosanna and a gori Therefore, Heavenly Father, in praise and thanksgiving, now we make this memorial of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim his triumphant resurrection. We celebrate our redemption through him and we look to his coming again in glory. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bless these gifts of bread and wine, the fruit of the earth worked by human hands, emblems of Christ's body and blood. Through them, may we in faith receive the body and the blood of our living Lord. 
Help us to approach your table in humility and expectation, that we may be strengthened in our faith, empowered to serve and to bear our witness. Unite us, Lord, with all your people, here on earth and in heaven, and bring us all at the last to feast with you in the joy of your heavenly kingdom. And to you, almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ shall come again. And so we remember. Would you please remove the top layer of film from the communion cups to uncover the wafer. We remember a rarglu with Yesi, a Norse of Braduch with Ev, a Gemer of Vara, a Gwedi Idol Theolch, the Toroth, a De Wedoth, Hunyu von Horf, a Dorir Er Ech Munchwi, Gwenev Hiner Kov Amdanav. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take and eat with thankful hearts. You would now peel back the next layer to uncover the wine. Arin Moth Hevid, the Gemarath, a coupon are all super. Gandwed, a coupon hun, your cavamod now with and van widey. Gwenauchin, bold trower of Uchev, er cov and dana. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink with thankful hearts. Oin do see then doing a mice bechod our bead. Tregarha or him. Oin do see them doing a mouth bechod our bead. Doro ni to dang neveth. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Almighty God, we thank you for loving the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son and that we have been privileged once again to sit at your table and to gaze in wonder at the work which he, the Saviour of the world, accomplished by his death upon the cross. And so, Lord, we would dedicate ourselves to you now praying that you will take us, body, soul, and spirit, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice, and send us out into the world in the power of your spirit to live and to work in thanksgiving for what has been done for us. To your praise and glory. Amen. Our final hymn, 940. Now let us from this table rise, renewed in body, mind, and soul. With Christ we die and rise again. His selfless love has made us whole.
mewn tangnefedd y wasenaeth i'r arglwydd a bendith diw holl a lleog a tad a mab ar y sbridlan a fod o gyda chwi yn wastad. Go in peace to serve the Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.